school as she is. Go ahead. Go ahead. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord, and we're so delighted that you are able to join us to our worship service this Sunday morning at St. John Missionary Baptist Church, Soul City Center. Our pastor is Pastor Gregory B. Black, and our late lady is Evangelist Patricia Black. We have a reason to be excited because God has blessed us and woke us up this morning to see another day. I said he woke us up this morning and started us on our way. We serve a good God. And we're going to show forth the praise, a song of praise and worship by Sister Sybil Best. Our scripture this morning, in prayer by our husband and wife team, scripture, Nana Johnson and Brother Lorenza Johnson. Come on, let's praise God because he's worthy of all praise. Good morning. First, I do give all honor to God on this morning, who's the head of my life. I give honor to Pastor Black, Evangelist Black, and to everyone else in their respectful order. Hallelujah to God be the glory. This morning when I rose, I didn't have no doubt. This morning when I rose, Meekness, temperance, 
against us there is no law, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Yeah. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, provoking one another, envying one another. I have read Galatians 5, 22 through 26. Amen. Let her all pray. Almost gracious and all eyes, and turn to God, we come before you one more time, O oh God. O oh God, we come before your son Jesus' name, O oh Heavenly Father yes. God. O oh God, we come just to tell you, thank you, O oh Heavenly Father God. God, we thank you for another chance, another yes. privilege, another yes. opportunity. Yes. Get that yes. right, O oh God. Yes. God, we thank you for being amongst the living and not the dead, O oh God. Yes. God, we thank you, Heavenly Father, we rose up this morning, O oh God, and gave us a portion of strength, O oh God. Yes. And we started our way, O oh God. Yes. And for that cause, we want to tell you, thanks, O oh God. Yes. God, we look at our cups, O oh Heavenly Father God, and have food to eat, O oh God. Yes. That alone is a blessing, we want to tell you, thank you, O oh God. God, we're ever helping our vehicles to drive the church on today, yeah. Father God. But that alone is a blessing, we're going to tell you, thank you, O God. Yeah. And your life is similar together one more time, O God. Yeah. And that alone is a blessing, O God. God, we're going to have the whole holy divine way by you, O God. Looking for every heart, looking for every mind, O Heavenly Father God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O Heavenly Father God. For you know what we go through, O Heavenly Father God. As you're looking for every child, O Heavenly Father God. Every man, every boy, every woman, every girl, O God. Now touch them in the mighty special way, O Heavenly Father God. God, meet their needs, O Heavenly Father God. Like only you can, O Heavenly Father God. We ask you, God, to have your host divine way, O God. God, touch the man, O God, that's going to break forth your word, O God. God, let them break forth with clarity and anointing, O Heavenly Father God. God, let them preach and teach your word, O Heavenly Father God. Continue to strengthen him, O God, when he weakened, O God. Build him up when he been torn down, O God. Touch him in the mighty special way, O Heavenly Father God. God, give him a raven word, O Heavenly Father God. That will set the captives free, O God. God, that will open up blind eyes, O God. That will give you the hope, O Heavenly Father God. Touch him like only you can, O Heavenly Father God. Give him a double portion of your Holy Spirit, O God. Your power and your anointing, O God. As you touch his help, O oh God. And stand close beside him, O Heavenly Father God. Continue to help her, O Heavenly Father God. And be the strength that he need, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, O Heavenly Father God. God, should bless the service, O God. Bless the airways from which the word is going to come forth, O God. God, remember every mind and heart that's listening on today, O God. And that something be said or done, O Heavenly Father God, that will change someone's life. We thank you for it. We honor you, God. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 worship our God. Yes. We thank God for our pastor yes. and may the Lord continue to use him as an anointed vessel of honor yes. for his glory as he teach and preach his holy word. May God's holy word as Pastor Black preached this morning lift your spirit, Boy. encourage your heart, and build your faith. Yes. Hear ye, hear ye, the servant of the Lord, our pastor, Pastor Gregory Black. Let's give Lord a hand clap and thank God because we have and an example for us. God bless you, Pastor. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen again. God is good, not so tired. All of us know that God is good all the time. Let's pray He was gracious in all eyes and eternal God. We thank you for last night, rest of the lives, and this morning. We thank you for life, health, and strength. All you've done and all you've been ready to do, Father, we pray now that you just let us down into the storehouse of your knowledge, of your wisdom, of your understanding. Help us to write the divine the word of truth. God, that will touch hearts, touch minds, touch souls. Oh, Father, that somebody will come running and crying or even calling on the phone. Yes, 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 what must yes. I do to be saved? Oh, yes. Father, we pray against any distraction, anything that's not of you, but within your word, you, that your word will come forth with clarity. Mm -hmm. Yes, deep blessing all the other blessings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the precious Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name. Let's let the redeemer of the Lord say us. Amen. 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 Give an honor to God, which is the head. My life, amen. It's to everybody else to Vanish Black, Vanish Roger, her absent, amen. Vanish Stokes, Vanish Black, and Ron Lord, amen. Everybody, we thank God for being back into the house of prayer one more time. Truly, God is still on the throne. Amen. We thank you, God. Let me try it again. God is still on the throne. So much 
But three passes of the script, we're going to move right along. We have Baptist right behind us. So we're going to move um, swiftly right along. So I'm worried that everybody that knows uh, the word of prayer, that can give prayer to you, can pray for us and pray with us that the word will come forth. I want to read the uh, three scriptures today. Uh, I won't get a chance to go all the way over, uh, but you may want to jot these down so that you can go back and reread and see where we are coming from. First one we want to read all of these is, 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 is the letters of Paul's writing. Uh, first one we want to look at is Galatians chapter one. Galatians chapter one, and we just want to just read from verses six through ten. Uh, but you know you can read it uh, from your, your own leisure uh, time. Amen. But I'm just going to read verses six through ten. Amen. And it reads as follows. Amen. Amen. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto, the, unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and that will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach not another gospel unto you, that which we have preached unto you, lest, lest him be accursed. Yes. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man yes. preach any other gospel unto yes. you, yes. then that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For it is I yet please, let me read it again. For do I now please men or God, or do I seek to please men? For it is I that pleases men, I should not be the servants of Christ. Amen. Let's turn it to Colossians. Amen. Amen. From Colossians uh, chapter 1. Now let's, let's go back to Ephesians first. Let's go to the book of Ephesians first. Ephesians chapter 3. And we want to read the first seven verses for you'll hear it. Ephesians chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. And it reads as follows. For this call I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for for Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given to me, you all, yes. how that by the revelation he made known unto me the mystery, underline the word mystery, the mysteries, as I wrote a four in a few words. Wherefore, by when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, yes. which is not in a, which in other age was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his only unto his holy prophet and prophet by the Spirit. Verse six, that the Gentiles, which shall be fellow heirs and of the same body and partaker of the promise of Christ, the gospel, verse seven. Whereof I was made, a, I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of power. Now let's turn to Colossians. Find out the poem we'll go to all of these, amen. Colossians chapter one, verses 25. Through 26. Amen. Amen. Listen how it reads. Whereof I was made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill the work of God. Yes. Even the, the mystery which had been hidden from ages and from generations, yes. but now is made manifest to his saints, yes. to whom God would make known 
What is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom yes. that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus. Yes. Verse 29. Whereas I also labor striving according to the working, according to the working which worketh in me mightily. Amen. Let's go back to probably verse 26. Even the mystery which have been hid from ages, from generations, wow. but now is made manifest to his saints. I want to preach from a subject this morning, a divine sign. Amen. A divine sign. Amen. All of us that are here today have had a sign in our life. Your assignment may be one thing and my assignment may be another, but all of us yeah. have had a physical assignment, Amen. even assignment on our job. We may not have the same assignment, but all of us have had a assignment. But this morning, we want to talk about a, a divine assignment. Most of us here that Bible scholars that, that read and study the word of God find out that how his name will change from Saul to Paul. Yes. Amen. But even from the foundation of the world, God had already had a divine assignment for Brother Paul. Amen. Amen. This divine assignment is not of man. That's why it's going to take a little while this morning. This assignment didn't have nothing to do with human nature. It had nothing to do with man calling him. Amen. 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 This was all the way directly from God himself. Amen. Amen. Uh, a divine assignment is not always easy. Amen. It's not always convenient. Amen. Divine assignment some kind, sometimes can be difficult. Sometimes it can be hard. And sometimes you have to go through some things in life with a divine assignment. Yes, a divine assignment can be dangerous sometimes. Sometimes we have to persevere. Sometimes we have to be persistent. Sometimes we have to endure with a divine assignment. On a divine assignment, winners just don't quit and quitters just don't win like that. Amen. So we, we have to continue to stay with what God has called us to do. A divine assignment is you don't have to add nothing to it. Neither do you have to take anything away from it because it is directly from God. When we read, when we study in the Bible, when it talks about divine, it's saying it is directly from God himself. Amen. Paul did not receive none of his information from no other man. He, he received his divine assignment directly from God. Amen. Amen. When we have a divine assignment, the only thing we have to do is do what we are called to do. Amen. By the Paul, he brings it out that there are uh, the fivefold ministry. Amen. And all of the fivefold ministry is a divine assignment from God. I wish I had a had for amen. Oh, yeah. amen. So we need a divine sign. Everybody is not going to lack. Everybody is not going to love your divine sign. Let, let me say it again. Everybody will not lack. Neither will everybody love your divine sign. Amen. Everybody will not agree with you. But you have to keep in the back of your mind. I have a divine assignment. Amen. So therefore, we don't have to worry about trying to please everybody. The only one that we're more concerned about pleasing is pleasing God Almighty. Have I got a witness here? Here today we find Apostle Paul is on a divine assignment from God. Even in all the scriptures that we were reading, Paul, he, he brought out in several places where he said that, I believe it's in Romans, when he said, 
I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Therefore, when you have a divine assignment, you don't have no buddy buddy, you don't have no friend friend, you don't have no close close, you got to preach it just like it is. Amen. When, 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 when you have a divine assignment, Oh, I wish I had uh, some help up in here today. But when you have a divine sign directly from God, you got to speak what God wants you to speak. You have to go where God wants you to go. You have to follow the instruction from God. So therefore, today we have Apostle Paul, he's dealing with the, a, a divine sign here. And I want to say that Paul was saying that I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. I'm getting to the mystery. That's very wrong with me. I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God unto salvation. Paul said it like this. He said, well, he said, woe unto me if I preach not the gospel. In other words, I don't have a choice in this matter now because man did not get it. Paul was saying, well, man did not teach it to me, neither did I receive it of man, so therefore I received it of God. Paul said, I, I wasn't taught of man, but I was taught of God. And when God gives you a, a divine sign, there's only one thing left to do, is do what God has called you to do. Let, let, let me try that one more time. When God has called you, when, when God has sealed you, and when God has delivered you, and when God has given you a divine sign, there's only one thing left to do. And only one thing left to do is preach the unadulterated word of God. Amen. So therefore, we need to know our calling. Amen. Know what God have, have called us to do. Amen. So, so Paul said, well, woe unto me, and curse be unto me if we preach any other gospel. Paul brought it out like this. He said, you know what? He said, I, I wasn't taught of men, but men didn't teach me this. It was God that taught me this. Have I got a witness in here? He just said, man didn't teach me this, but what? God have taught me this. Let, let me read this for you and we'll move right on to our text about this mystery. What, what was his divine assignment? But let me read this verse. It, it talks about what Paul was saying. He said, therefore sin, we have this ministry. As we have received mercy, he said, we faint not. Because I have a divine ministry and I have a divine assignment. But he said, but we have renounced, he said, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craft and not handling the word of God deceitfully, but manifesting the truth, commending ourselves to every man country in the sight of God. Paul had a divine assignment. What, what was his divine assignment? His a divine assignment was to fulfill the word of God. His, his divine assignment was to completely fill and preach the unadulterated word of God. But Paul said, listen, he said, said but if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that is lost. To whom God of this world, which is Salem, hath blinded the minds of them that believe, that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel is the image of God, which shall shine unto them. Paul kept on saying, he said, for we preach not ourselves. Amen. In other words, not only him ever who God have called to preach. I don't have no business getting up here trying to preach myself. I have no business trying to preach no gospel of my own. I have no business to have given no theory of my own. Why? But Paul said, we preach. He's not the only preacher, but he's the one I'm talking about now. He said, for we preach not ourselves. Mm. He said, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus. In other words, ourselves, we are a servant of God. Amen. Amen. Maybe I didn't say that right. We are a servant of God. Let me try it one more time. We are a servant of God. We are a divine assignment. 
Paul went on and said, said, For God who commanded the light to shine in darkness has shined in our heart. This is what it said. To give the light of knowledge. To give the understanding of a glorious in the face of Jesus Christ. But I like what Paul said. He said, but we, not only him, me and everybody else that carry the word of God. He said, but we have this treasure in earthly vessels. Yes. We are the earthly vessels. Yes. You are the earthly yes. vessels. For we have this treasure in earthly vessels. This is what he said. He said that the excellence of the power of God may not be, oh God, may not be of us. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about Jesus Christ. It's about Mary David. It's about the Lamb of God. Listen to what he's saying. He said, we, we, we are troubled. I'm, I'm coming to the mystery in just a few minutes, but I want to lay a foundation about how we have this assignment. This is what Paul said. He said, we, he didn't say I. He said, we are troubled. He didn't say every now and then, once in a while, on one side. But he said, we are troubled. Somebody else picked that up too. He said, but we are, I'm in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8 now. But we are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not distressed. Oh, God, help me right there. I, I'm not going to quit. I'm not going down without a fight. Paul, Paul was saying, I just told you, when you have a divine assignment, it can be dangerous. He said, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. We are forsaken, but we are not cast down. Oh, God. But not, well, listen, we are persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Listen to what he said. Why, why are we still doing it? Because always buried about in the body, the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life also of Jesus Christ may be manifest. This word manifest means made, made. Oh, God. Somebody else already got it. It needs to be made what? Be made known. Have I got a witness in here? So now, Apostle Paul is dealing in it and Col Colossians and talks about the Gentiles. In other words, in, in the Old Testament, that it's a lot of things may be hidden. It wasn't no secret per se, but it was just unknown. Amen. Amen. And so therefore, the gospel sometimes, it can be a mystery. In, in other words, a mystery that is the truth that's just not ordinary told out. Amen. But how, how many know that God is working in a way that he can bring the mystery out? In, in other words, if you cannot understand this mystery of God. In other words, the human mind cannot capture it. The human mind cannot understand it. So, so, so Paul was bringing the mystery. In, in, in other words, God, help me to preach and tell the story. Paul had a divine assignment. Amen. His assignment was above everybody else. In other words, Paul was the one that was breaking down the mystery to the Gentiles. In other words, they, they got news now that they, they can be saved just like you and I. Oh, they, they can receive the power just like, oh, somebody got it now. Amen. Amen. So, but the Bible, Paul was letting us know Paul was a minister or a servant Amen. to the churches because of his divine assignment. Listen, this divine assignment was to fulfill the word of God. Amen. In other words, when I said fulfill the word of God, it's saying that God was giving him power to preach the gospel Amen. around a great era. Amen. Those that have not heard the word of God. In other words, he said when, when God gave him this assignment, it was geographic. In other words, it was way out that he could just win soul for Christ. When he said fulfill the gospel, this is saying fully preach the word of God. That's what we need to do now. We need to go back and fully preach the word of God. See, if you don't fully preach the word of God, somebody's going to miss it. But I come to let you know, when God has given you a divine assignment, it's not only the preacher, but guess what? It could be the digger. It could be the mother. It could be the choir. Man. God can give you a divine assignment. 
But Paul, Paul is saying that God has given me a, a divine assignment that is to fully preach the gospel. Here is the meat of the matter for today. But what is the meat of the matter? What, what is fully preaching the gospel? In other words, we got to understand this mystery here. A mystery is a divine truth. In other words, divine truth comes directly from God. So let me help you right there. Do you not know you can tell the truth and it still won't be the gospel truth? Amen. 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 Let me say that again. Amen. You can tell the truth and it won't be the gospel truth. Amen. Let me try it one more time. Make it plain, Pastor. Make you can tell the truth. And it still won't be the gospel truth. Right. Amen. If, if there's a hole in my jacket, mm -hmm. and you said, Pastor said, there's a big hole in your jacket, that That's is the, the truth. truth. But it ain't got nothing to do with the gospel. Amen. 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 So therefore, the gospel is a divine truth because it is too profound. It's too much for the human to comprehend without God. Amen. Let me say it again. The mystery is the divine truth, but it's too profound for you to unravel, for you to understand without the Holy Ghost. Without God, we cannot understand the mystery. Amen. Some of the gospel was a mystery. Amen. And guess what? The Bible is nearly a mystery. Yes, you, you just can't just take this book and just right. sit down and just open it up and read it and you don't understand. You You, you got to open this book and read it and then pray for a revelation from So therefore, it was a mystery. Amen. Mm. But this is what he said. He said, but, but now God is disclosing it to man, open it up to man, yeah. through him by God, through him by his apostles and his a prophet. God is, is open up the mystery. Amen. See, now, now a lot of things that the Gentiles did not know. They did not understand. But now God have, have equipped a, a divine assigned Apostle Paul to, to do this thing. I feel like people, I got to teach them this morning because we have a divine assignment. Amen. And, and sometimes the thing that you go through in life, you want to wonder, did God really call you to do what he called you to do? But, but, but one thing about God, God, when, when he called you, he equipped you. When he called you, if, if God called you to wreck a yard, I promise you he's going to give you a wreck. Amen. See, see, God give you the quip to do what he wants you to do. If, if God has called you to be a, a singer, I, I, I promise you God will get your voice right so he can sing. But guess what? Not sing to the world, but sing to the glory of God. When you have a divine assignment, I, I'm just wondering this morning that anybody else feel like I feel. So you, when you have a divine assignment, any and everybody is not going to stop you, not going to block you, not going to turn you around. Why? Because I have a divine assignment. Amen. God help me to tell tell the story. Amen. Amen. Let me go just a little bit before my time is running out. God, this is good this morning because guess what? I'm on a divine assignment. Can, can I take off my note and just drop it back to you for a minute? I'm human just like you are. If you cut me, I'm going to bleed. If you throw a brick and hit me, I'm going to feel it. Watch what I'm giving. Say, the enemy comes to me just like he comes to you. And the enemy talks to me just like he talks to you. He tells me ain't nothing just like he tells everybody else. Oh, yeah. But guess what? I had to let him know I'm on a divine assignment. Yeah. And that's what you have to do. When the devil gets on your trail and starts to pull you and knocking you down, you got to say, listen, say, you didn't hide me, you can't find me, but I'm on a divine assignment. 
trying to get, I, I know y'all got, got all these alphabets in front of your name. You know everything. But let me tell you something. There's something man can't teach you. But there's something holy the Holy Ghost. Let me try it one more time. There's something that the Holy Ghost has to reveal to you. Only the Holy Ghost. I wish I had time. My time is running out. I, I was reading it. I was studying this thing last night. I said, oh my God, look where we are located. And I kept reading to find out that, that God was, was used Apostle Paul in a mighty way. He had him on this divine assignment. And when he got into the book of Colossians, when he talks about the third chapter, talk about the mystery made known. In other words, that, that there was something hid there, but when he talks about the mystery made known, he, he's running this thing to all the Gentiles. In other words, he's bringing it open unto them. Why? Because there was a lot of things that the, the Gentiles did not know. Verse 3 talks about how that by the revelation he made known unto me. See, that, that this God had to make this known unto Paul. Paul just couldn't dream it. He just couldn't write about it. Nobody couldn't tell it. God had to make it known unto him. Have I got a witness in? And I kept on, the family still kept on reading it and studying and finding out that there were seven mysteries that the Gentile before had missed. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Now, guess what? We've been a Gentile too. Amen. 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 Don't you laugh. You've been a Gentile too. Amen. All of us have been. <coughs> oh, we got that. that, that here are some of the, the, the mysteries that they miss. You might want to jot them down or call them. We'll go back over later. That time is running out on the fast. Listen, it, it talks about seven mysteries. Mystery number one is that the mystery that Christ, this was a mystery of Christ and his church. You couldn't understand it without the revelation. Yeah, God had to give you a revelation. On number two, it was the mystery of the gospel. Sometimes the gospel can be a mystery. Then there was another one that talks about the mystery of the indwelling in Christ. See, the Gentiles couldn't understand about talking about Christ living in you. That, that, that was kind of hard. That was kind of, kind of difficult. When Paul was teaching and preaching when he was talking about Christ living in you. But oh, guess what? God broke it down so that they really could understand it. Have I got a witness here? And it also it talks about the mystery of the Jews, both Jews and Gentile in one body. How many know that when Christ come in, he'll make a difference in our life? Another mystery that talks about the mystery of the kingdom of heaven. They, they couldn't understand about the kingdom of the mystery of heaven. Another one that talks about the mystery of the rapture. I believe it's in verse correctly, maybe chapter 15, somewhere around there, maybe 15, verse 50, somewhere around, when it talks about, he said, I will show you. Oh, it just ran in the text. He said, I will show you a mystery. Oh, somebody else already read. It was a mystery to them. I have I got a witness here? So therefore, it lets us know it was a mystery about the church, how the church had been established. But when God began to use Paul in a very good way that he could break it down that guess what? Letting the Gentiles know that, that God can save you. you, you in other words, you become a fellow heir. In other words, with, through and by the power, through and by the anointing of the Holy Ghost that's dwelling in all of the, the, the Gentiles have the same privilege. Uh oh the Gentiles have the same right as you and I have. So we, we don't need to look back at nobody else. Why? Because this mystery has been made known. And he said, come unto me all ye that are labor and heavy labor, and I will give you rest. Why? Because Paul had a divine assignment. Yeah. You want more time to got to get out and got to do some baptism. But listen, on this divine assignment, there were times when Paul lacked the lost his life. Oh, yeah. Amen. But guess what? That did not change him. That's right. His divine assignment. Yeah. Let me try it again. There were times when he liked to lose his life. Amen. But that did not change his divine assignment. Listen, if you are not willing to die, you are not ready to leave. Yeah. Yeah. Let me try it again. None of us is homesick, but on this gospel, preaching and teaching and living a holy Christian life,
time, your life will be taken anyway. If you are not ready to die, you are not ready to live. Amen. I didn't get too many amen. 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 Let me try one more time. If you are not ready to die, you are not ready to live. Amen. Watch, watch this, God. This is, this is good. For Paul, all the distraction, I, I was reading the study and find out it said all the suffering that, that, that Paul went through. All the downfall, all the, the pitfall that he went through, that, that did not distract him Amen. from preaching the gospel. And I, I read in one place it said that it enhanced him. In other words, it helped him along the way. But you got to know who you are and who you belong to. You have to know that God has called you. You have to know that God has a point. You have to know that God has sent you. You, you have to know that God, God help me to preach here. You have to know that God is with you. That, that, that's for God. That, that's why so many pastors are, it, it's backing out. They're burning out. They're turning out. They're leaving out. They're walking out. They're crawling out. They're falling out. They're dying out. Why? Because they don't have the power of God. Amen. 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 But you got to have this is a divine assignment. Few more points that will soon be through. God, this is good. My, my, let me just leave this just for a few moments and come right back. I kept the whole reading and kept on studying. Not only was Apostle Paul had divine appointment, we can go all the way back to the book of Genesis and see the handwork of God. See, God was still doing divine work. Why? Because God took Abraham and, and called him through a divine vision. Amen. See, that, that was divine direct, directly from God. The man in chapter 12. God, man didn't have nothing to do with it. That was divine from God. I kept on reading. I found out that, that Joseph had a divine dream come directly from God. That's in Genesis 37. I, I, I got to think about this thing. I said Moses had a a divine calling from God from a burning bush. See, 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 God has a distinctive way of dealing with it, but they had a, a divine call. Now, what, what made that Moses a divine call? In other words, God himself, when Moses was in the in the back the back side of the mountain and the bush was burning, and a voice just came out and, and told Moses, said, Now look, put off your shoes for the ground that you stand on oh, is holy yeah. ground. You, you see, see where I'm going with this? And, and Moses knew that he had made a mistake and done wrong, but, get, but God could use him. Even though you and I have made a mistake, God still can use you. Aaron, which was, his brother was called by his brother Moses, divine, threw in by God. I kept on reading the study and I found out that Joshua, God helped me here. He had a divine calling through him by Moses. In other words, I, I, I knew it was divine because God began to talk to Joshua and told Joshua, so as I was with Moses. Oh, you got it now. So that, that is divine. And don't you know it's good when you're doing the work of God and God is standing right by your side. That's what we call a divine call. Even in the book of Judges, divine give me a hand. He had a divine call through him by an angel. In other words, God was still dealing with him. Even Samuel had a divine calling in 1 Samuel chapter 3 through him by God. David had a divine calling through him by the prophet Samuel. Paul had a divine calling while he was on the master road. In other words, we knew it was through him by the power of the almighty God. And when we have a divine call you just can't stop anywhere. You might get disturbed sometimes, but you gotta hang on in there. In other words, there's a time waiting for you. If you have a divine calling, you gotta go. If I have to go by yourself, if your wife don't go, your husband don't go, your children don't go, you still gonna have to go because I have a divine call. I come by this morning to let you know I'm just a little old country boy from Martin County, North Carolina. May not be everywhere, know everything.
What is your assignment? My assignment is not to fuss, cuss, nor armor, but my assignment is to declare the unadulterated. Preach the word in season, I don't see. Preach the word when you want to hear. Preach it when you don't want to hear. And my assignment is to let you know that if you don't live right, if you're not going to get your own way to hell, my assignment is to let you know that Jesus Christ never invaded the Lamb of God, the little of us, the moon is God, the great I am, the word of To preach and to teach his word. Apostle Paul was on a divine assignment. I'm getting ready to close. I'm through now. There's a lot of people is on assignment, but it's not divine. You'll you, you hear about it within the next couple of months. Because I believe God is going to use me to bring it out. What is that? Approved by God and not by man. I said approval. See, a lot of us have approval of man and does not have the approval of God. As long as God has stamped his approval on you, keep on living right. Keep on saying, keep on preaching, keep on witnessing, keep on testifying, doing what God has called you to do. Why? Because I'm on a divine assignment. It comes with a lot of territory. And I hope I say something that will help me. There being a person or person that do not know Christ oh, yes. in the part of their sin. The Bible said, Come unto me, all ye that are laden and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon me and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. The day that you hear my voice, what am I talking about? If thou can believe in thy heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt. Be saved. Let us pray. Most gracious and all wise and eternal. Thank you, Lord. We come now as humble as we know how to Thank you, Father, for all you've done and all you're doing, all you're getting ready to do. Father, those that's listening by conference call, TV, Facebook, ever how they're connected. Touch your heart, touch your mind, touch your soul. Father, there's a lot of things that's been in your mystery. Father, we realize and understand Paul unraveled that mystery today. Father, that all of us can be saved. All of us can come to him now. Father, all of us have had a Gentile mentality. But God, we're so glad that you look beyond our faults now and saw our need. And Father, we pray that you will save on today. We pray that you will save on today. Father, such our heart. Father, such our mind. Such our soul. Father, whatever is there that, that ought not to be that will hinder us now or even in the days, weeks, and years of God. Father, we did it to move. Father, prepare our heart. Prepare our mind to receive you. And Father, God, that we need this place but not be your presence. Father, we ask you to stay with us. Father, remember those that's down, those that's out in the hospital or the prison, but on the private home, wherever they may be. Father, we know that you're here, you're there, Lord. you're everywhere. And Father God, we come today to tell you we love you. Yeah, help us, God, to live holy. Help us to live yeah, better. Help us to yeah. live a better Christian life. Father, help us to think less of ourselves and more about you. Father, we pray yeah, now, God, for the absent bodies of the church. Father, we ever be able to do it. Touch their heart, touch their yeah, mind, touch their the soul. God, wrap your arms around and keep in them in the care. Let them know that we are concerned. Let them know that we care about you. Boy. Now, may the grace of our Lord, may the best room and abide with us all. In force and forevermore. Let us all say amen. Amen. While we're right there, I would we'll like, we'll love to announce that they're here. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd like to announce that uh, next Sunday we're going to do our communion and we're going to start early, you know, right on time and right at maybe a quarter to you, maybe 20 minutes to 12. Uh, we won't stop long enough to do our communion. Those that are here that's coming back next Sunday, 
you can pick up your bread and wine when you get here next Sunday. But if someone is here that will not be here next Sunday, uh, please get one today so that you can watch it online or however you want to do it, uh, that we can do it on next Sunday. Amen. Amen. Any other announcement? Any, any other announcement? I'd like to announce that on uh, Wednesday, uh, between 10 and 12, anybody like a box of food, uh, you may come out that time, you should be at the food bank uh, on Wednesday, um, I'm sorry, Monday, which is tomorrow, from 10 to 12. You may come by and pick up a box uh, at the food bank. Also, um, you said box at a drive-by? Today, today, in the back, we give away boxes today. Okay, they said we'll be a drive-by, give away boxes today. Um, that's a food bank if you care for one on today. Also, I'd like to ask that you don't forget the homeless shelter uh, and TV ministry. Um, we're going to give it to uh, Brother Godwin uh, and whoever at the back door as you go out and give it to them uh, after the service. Thank you, Shane. Any other things? Don't you know, announcement? We pray that your day will be a blessed day on today. We ask that you not stand for baptism. You may stand. And you may exhale six feet apart. So on this side, the baptism are my granddaughters. <laughs> 